The Importance of Humility No matter our failures, we should first and foremost humble ourselves in order to restore our relationship with God. Here's Gene to explain. Let me give you the background for this principle. Ultimately, Solomon failed. He was the wisest man that ever lived, other than Jesus Christ. He started out well. He wanted to honor God. He sought God's will. An amazing example of humility. But ultimately, he violated God's will. He began to marry pagan women. He multiplied wives, which God said he shouldn't do. But these pagan wives led him into incredible idolatry. And ultimately, God took the kingdom from him, and it was split. Rehoboam, his son, received the, king, the southern uh, tribes, particularly the tribe of Judah. And then Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, a very evil, wicked guy, became the king of the north. And he really sinned against God. And so there was tension between the southern uh, group of, of, of Jews called Judah and those that were called the Israelites or the ten tribes of the north. Now the focus here, as far as this principle is concerned, is on Rehoboam. And because of his sin, Rehoboam also failed the Lord, just like his father did. And God was going to wipe him out, absolutely and totally. But through a prophet, uh, the word came that the king of Egypt was going to do a lot of damage, but he wasn't going to destroy him completely. And that's the background to this principle. So let's take a look at the passage of Scripture, which relates to humility. Notice what we see here. When Rehoboam humbled himself, he was a very wicked king. He made some very bad decisions. But when he humbled himself, the Lord's anger turned away from him, and he did not destroy him completely. See, God had mercy. God had grace. Besides that, conditions were good in Judah, where he was the king. In other words, God blessed the people in spite of Rehoboam being a wicked king king. Now, the amazing thing here is that God honors humility. That's the hallmark of following Jesus Christ, is humility. And we see that illustrated in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through verse 8. I'm sure you've read this passage many times. Paul said, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. Now what is that attitude? Who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for His own advantage. This is talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord of the universe, when He became a man. Instead, He emptied Himself by assuming the form of a slave. Not just a man, but a slave, taking on the likeness of men. The eternal God taking on the likeness of men. Paul continues, and when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Jesus Christ demonstrated and illustrated humility in the ultimate sense. And we're to be like Him. We're to exemplify that attitude. To let this attitude be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so we see here, even in the Old Testament, that in spite of Rehoboam's wickedness and his sin, when he humbled himself before the Lord, God honored that and didn't destroy him completely. And the reflection response question is, is why is it so difficult for those who have failed ethically and morally to give up their pride and humble themselves before God? I was reflecting on that question 
trying to come up with what I think is a significant answer. And one of the thoughts that came to me was that people who fail ethically and morally, who have difficulty really humbling themselves before God, is they enjoy what they did wrong. They just enjoyed it. And they're sorry they were caught. I've seen that so many times. They're sorry they got caught. Their tears oftentimes relate to the fact that they got caught rather than if they broke the heart of God, which doesn't mean they have a broken heart themselves. So people like that have a very difficult time really humbling themselves before God because they don't have a broken heart. I've seen this happen many, many times. I've seen people weep because they got caught. But ultimately, I've seen them continue in their sin rather than truly turning from their sin and letting God once again use them and redeem them from their particular situation. So that's a lesson, isn't it, to all of us? God honors humility.